Hi, my name is Dr. Tolo and I'm here to talk to you today about a condition called resource disease. Something that I think we don't have a lot of information about it out there. So guys, I would like you to stay tuned if you like what I have to say. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, drop a comment for me and then share this video if you find it useful. So without much ado, let's get right to it. We are going to be breaking down viscous disease using a couple of subheadings. We are going to define it. We are going to talk about what causes it. We are also going to look at how to prevent it. We are going to look at how to treat it if unfortunately it does happen. And then we are going to be discussing complications that may arise if it is left untreated. let's get to the first point what is resource disease now resource disease is a condition that happens during pregnancy and it is a condition that can negatively affect the unborn baby in a woman if the unborn baby in the woman is resource positive and the woman carrying the pregnancy is resource negative now there is a protein that is usually found on red blood cells and this protein is called the resource factor and this resource factor is what usually determines if the resource disease presents in pregnancy or it doesn't. 85% of population have the resource factor and so about 15% of population are resource negative. Say you are O positive or O negative or you are AB positive or you are B negative. That plus or minus is a reflection of your resource status. So for those who are say O positive, what that means is your blood group is O and that positive means you have the resource factor. And for those who have the negative sign or the minus sign what that means is that they are versus negative point two which is what causes versus disease it happens when a versus negative mother is pregnant and carrying in her womb a fetus that is versus positive right it doesn't happen when the mother is positive and the baby is negative it only happens when the mother is negative and the baby is positive and steps are not taken to prevent problems from happening so what happens when this occurs is that the mother being negative that means she does not have the resource factor sees the baby or the unborn child or the fetus as something that is foreign because it is resource positive so it's like a foreigner in her body because she's negative and it's positive and she does not know what it is all about so she then produces antibodies antibodies are like soldiers right so she's negative child is positive she sees this as a foreigner produces antibodies and then they go attack the blood cells of the child that's basically what in a simplified form resource disease is about so from what I've said you can see that resource disease does not affect the mother but it affects the child that she's carrying during pregnancy. We move to the third point, which is how do we prevent resource disease from happening? First of all, it's important to state that every one should know their resource status right you want to know if you are resource positive or resource negative if you have a woman who is looking to at some point in time in her life have biological children and she's resource negative then she has to pay particular attention to this especially when she gets pregnant to so start antenatal care early in their first trimester that's usually when antenatal care starts right so your resource status will be checked and if you are found to be negative and your unborn child yes is positive then we need to start taking measures and the most important measure that can be taken is something called anti-d immunoglobulin now it's popularly known as rogam in several places but what it is it is an injection that is given at certain points in the pregnancy now the reason why this injection is given at certain points in the pregnancy it is timed in such a way that it is given to reduce or prevent exposure of the maternal cells to the fetus's blood cells so when this exposure is prevented and is kept at a minimal level then the mother's body would not be able to mount an antibody response that means it should not be able to create the soldiers that can go and attack the blood cells of the fetus the reason why this is important is because if the antibodies are allowed to attack 
the cells of the child then it can cause different problems and even after birth for some time it can continue to attack the cells of the newborn it's important to know that this anti-d immunoglobulin it only works if the mother has not been previously sensitized to a resource positive fetus here's what i mean so imagine a scenario where say there is a resource negative woman who had previously gotten pregnant with a fetus that was resource positive and maybe she got rid of it or maybe she gave birth to the child because of that child or that fetus that she carried and gave birth to the newborn by the time she gets pregnant again with another fetus that is resource positive it will be very quick for her to produce the antibodies again and then cause a problem so in people like that we pay more attention to them during antenatal care more than we do to other women who are pregnant and don't have any conditions like that and then carrying out interventions based on what may happen because the anti immunoglobulin will not work in them because they have been previously sensitized And so we move to the fourth point which is treatment so let's say vessels disease has happened and we need to treat it there are a couple of things that need to happen the first is when the child is born we admit the child to a neonatal unit that is a unit that specializes in taking care of newborns and a couple of other interventions can be carried out we carry out something called phototherapy that means putting the baby under lights so this can help with the destruction of the cells of the newborn which is happening because of that antibody immune response that the mother produced against the fetus other things we can do are blood transfusion blood transfusions help to reduce the severity of resource disease and another thing we can do is iv immunoglobulin so these iv immunoglobulins are given to prevent destruction of the red blood cells of the newborn so these are some of the things that can be done to treat it and to reduce the risk to the newborn And so guys we come to the fifth point on the list which is talking about complications that may arise if vessels disease is left untreated so a couple of complications can arise in the newborn because like we said vessels disease does not affect the mother it affects the fetus and with time the newborn so some of these complications include the pregnancy may result in a stillbirth that means the child is born dead and if it does not kill the child it can cause some other problems like uh, hearing loss vision loss right it can cause brain damage learning difficulties a couple of really unpleasant complications that no one wants to see in their newborn so basically the point of this video is to tell all women out there to know your resource status to know if you are resource positive or resource negative and then to carry out the appropriate actions it's also important for women when they are pregnant to attend antenatal care with your healthcare provider so that you can be monitored right especially if you are resource negative guys i hope this video was very useful it's been all about resource disease if you liked what i had to say i would like you to subscribe i would like you to drop a like i would like you to comment thank you dr tolu that will help me to know that you got to the end of this video and most importantly i would like you to share this video with as many people as you can so that more and more people can know about this easily prevented but dangerous medical condition resource disease thank you for watching bye